It feels really good uh, to be in South Carolina, the great Palmetto State. Um, being in D.C. has been exciting, and I take these all off and on because I can't see sometimes if I'm trying to read. But being in D.C. has been exciting, it's been adventurous, and it's been interesting. Um, being in South Carolina as long as I've, I've been here, um, learning to drive in D.C. was interesting, <laughs> to say the least. Um, I had to learn to... Um, I had to learn to be a little more creative with my driving um, because I was driving like a South Carolinian just going along or anyone in the South, I didn't know, pun intended, but I was just doing what I do in South Carolina, just driving along and this lady blew her horn at me and I guess I wasn't going fast enough so um, I blew my horn back. <laughs> I thought she was saying hello, this is what I first got to <laughs> And it seemed to bother her that I blew my heart back. So she made it a point when she passed me to um, give me what my uh, colleagues in D.C. told me is the D.C. wave. <laughs> I hope to um, not get that D.C. wave anymore. So I stopped blowing my horn back. <laughs> I did think she was just being friendly, but you know, that, that, that wasn't it. Uh, the Metro, um, which is a wonderful system in D.C. and the DMV, um, and it took me five years to even get on it to really go somewhere by myself because <laughs> I wanted to make sure I could get back. And <laughs> so, you know, we drove everywhere here, or we drive everywhere here, and I wanted to drive, but driving in D.C. is diff different. Uh, so I did finally get on. And the last thing I wanted to tell you, which I, I just find so comical, when at Sliss I have a um, visor that says cocky librarian. And I had to explain that. <laughs> because I did walk around with attitude when I wore it. <laughs> and I'm glad I got to see cocky because I really love him. And I, you know, you'll have to tell them what I'm saying about uh, this cocky librarian. Then I have uh, something in my office that says, um, famously hot and cocky. Well, I have to explain that too. <laughs> and some things you just let be, but you know, I needed to explain what was going on with the famously hot and cocky, and so I did. Yeah. And, and yeah. So. <laughs> But I did have someone to come from the Talking Book Library, which is here uh, in, in this uh, state library. And she knew right away when she came in, she said, that must be someone from Columbia in that office. And so that, that's that. Um, to Dean Reichert and to the interim director, um, to Dr. Copeland, to Mike, you deserve that award because I tell you what, you did everything for me, and, and for that I'm very appreciative. Yeah, he was on, right on it. Any, anything I needed, he made sure. So thank you. And to all of the recipients that received an award tonight, good job. First Lady Prestige. Uh, and I can't, I, you know, you don't want to call names, because when you call names, you may forget someone. So everyone, I love you. Uh, <laughs> and I mean it. And I mean it. Um, I want to thank all of my friends and my family members that came here tonight. Uh, and I have a lot of friends, right? And family members. My family members, I have a niece that looks just like me. And she said, Tia, hurry up and get here. They think that um, you're, I'm you. <laughs> so I said, I'm coming, I'm coming. And lastly, to, if you notice a lot of red in this room, to my sorority sisters, the dynamic ladies of Delta Sigma Theta Incorporated. Thank you so much. It's nothing like having sisters. In the early, and I'm gonna to try to adjust this mic, um, in the early 1960s, led by my mother, I walked into the New Jersey Public Library. I recall walking quietly down the hall in the larger-than-life building into the children's area. 
I could hear my patent leather shoes as they touched each floor tile. It was a rite of passage to get a library card at the age of five. I proudly walked out of the library with the responsibility to take care of those borrowed books. And after that visit, I became a lifelong reader. Somehow, I always found myself around books in, in a library while attending college uh, at Claflin University in Orangeburg, not far from here. I was a work-study student, and I was assigned a position in a library where a group of librarians recognized the intrinsic values that had already been woven into my life. They anointed me and died in the wool that I would be a librarian. Boy, did I fight that. <laughs> After graduating from college, my first job was in the main library in Charleston, South Carolina. I taught school for a few years, but that ended when I became a mother. And might I add that being a, being a mother is the joy of my life. Four years later, I began working at the Casey West Columbia Library, and I started as a page. And you know what that entails, shelving a lot of books, a lot of books. And then I finally decided to pursue a library science degree while working a full-time job and being a full-time mom. It wasn't an easy task, but, you know, it, it, it worked. You know, you did what you had to do, and I had a little girl in tow, and uh, she read books because I wanted to make sure, and a lot of you have seen her. She's here with us tonight. But uh, when I finally graduated, someone said she should get a degree, too, for just being in, in, in the classes that I was in. I was recruited by um, a former state librarian and accepted a job at the South Carolina State Library as a director for the Talking Book Program. And the Talking Book Program still goes on. Uh, in every state, there's a library for the blind. And this library, very prestigious and have always done a good job, and they're still doing a good job. Uh, and as you may know, I'm a consultant, so I do a lot of traveling. And so when he talked about Tommy Preston being at Boeing and something about the airplanes, I just, I don't even want to talk about it <laughs> because that, that's a part of what I get to do almost every, every other week. I'm flying somewhere. Um, so talking with program here, and then my next move was a dream move to the Library of Congress. I could not do that job if I did not have the support of my family. And I have a, some people have a five-year-old or two-year-old, whatever. I have a 92-year-old, and that's my mom, who is not here with us tonight. I thought they were going to sneak her in and surprise me. I'm glad they didn't, but <laughs> because it would have been harder to get up and, and talk. But they take care of my family. My village takes care of my mom, and it makes it possible. And they've supported me in my dream to be at the Library of Congress. So for that, I'm very grateful. I traveled the entire West Coast. And um, that means that uh, every almost every other month, I'm on the road going somewhere. So for the past four years, I mean, I'm sorry, for the past 10 years, I've been around. Uh, different states. I've been from uh, Grand Forks in North Dakota to uh, Juneau, Alaska, and I've been uh, around, let's see, Casper, Wyoming, to Honolulu, Hawaii, because all of that is my ter territory. So it's quite interesting. I know all of the state capitals, or at least I remember them now. <laughs> and I did learn when you travel in the Dakotas, you don't go there during service. Not unless you plan to ride a bike. <laughs> uh, and I've been on so many flights, once again, that um, I, when the flight attendant gets up, I, I actually know the speech. I can, I can just say what they're saying or just mimic it just for the heck of it. Let me paint a picture, if you will, concerning our lives as a beautiful piece of fabric. We all know to behold and touch a tangible piece of fabric 
with the most elaborate designs. There had to have been a lot of time and skills to create such a piece. Hence, our lives are likened unto a piece of fabric that has been produced by weaving and knitting. The very purpose and design of who we are as individuals and collectively together. These are the very threads that were woven into the fabric of my life. Here's the thought. When you see a loose thread hanging from clothing, you tend to cut or, or to tear it off. Why? Because it's out of place. So let's stand together as one piece of fabric. Libraries are trusted places. Libraries are meccas, a mecca of, of learning and knowledge, and it's a safe place. I see you standing with me as you understand and agree that blind, visually impaired, and people being differently able should never be defined let me start all over again. <laughs> I see you standing with me as you understand and agree that blind, visually impaired, and people being differently able should never define who they are or decide what they or you are able to accomplish. Do you agree? Okay. Well, good. Don't take for granted the things that have been woven into our lives, such as a friend. A friend is there for a purpose, which is to stand by you. By us being here tonight, it shows that every thread is knitted together to create and to form the most beautiful piece of fabric. Look at yourselves. While traveling in a small bookstore in Albuquerque, New Mexico, I saw the following and I'd like to share it with you because it touched my soul. So, in our America, all people are equal. Love wins, Black Lives Matter, immigrants and refugees are welcome, disabilities are respected, women are in charge of their bodies, diversity is celebrated. Every voice in this room matters. And I thank you. Stand by me. Stand with me.